What's up, everybody? It's Glenn and Big Jack. Uh, coming hot to you with a divisional uh, round best bets of the NFL weekend video. Big Jack coming in off of a 3-0 and uh, opening wildcard weekend of the playoffs to bring his overall season record to just above 55%, 55.4%, 31-25-1 on the season. I had a 1-2 and two week. Brings me directly back to 500 on the season. So I'm 26, 26 and five big Jack. You feeling good after that uh, three and all week or what? <laughs> feeling great, man. Real great. Um, you know, it's, it's tough as the games start to get whittled down, but um, you know, at the same time, it's also <clears throat> you sort of know what you're going to get out of teams. Obviously it's a uh, winner go home. There's, you know, not really much question about the effort that's involved or guys that are going to fight through injuries and all that sort of thing. It's pretty much everybody full throttle trying to make that Super Bowl run. So, well, it's, uh, you know, it's tough and not the easiest to read when that board tightens up. It also, you know, you're able to have a little bit more reliable uh, data with all the guys that are out there. Um, this week, though, it's just uh, condenses that much further, goes uh, down to only four games. Um, and, you know, in my opinion, last week, I told you before we did the video, I felt like I could have picked all six. Um, I felt like really good about my picks this week. Uh, <laughs> it's tough to find three out of four, but uh, we're going to try to do it. And, uh, hopefully we can keep uh, the momentum going after last week. Amen, my man. Uh, it'd be nice uh, to have me finish above 50% on the year for sure. I don't want to drop well 500, but it'd be nice uh, you keep building on that record. Have a nice little run in the playoffs. Um, that being said, you talk about uh, how you feel like it gets a little bit more predictable. Well, I went on record, maybe not so strong in the video, maybe a little bit stronger group chat, saying it was an absolute lock that the Cleveland Browns were going to steamroll the Houston Texans <laughs> last week. And I was a little off on that prediction. Uh, Houston Texans come out. They look great. Uh, C.J. Stroud looks like the the rookie of the year that he probably is. Um, he's looking like a uh, young and upcoming promising quarterback in the NFL. Uh, they go to Baltimore this week uh, where the Baltimore Ravens are nine and a half point favorites. How could the Texans be nine and a half dog, nine and a half point dogs to anybody? I'll tell you how that's because the Baltimore Ravens are going to beat that ass. I'm going to go Baltimore Ravens minus nine and a half as my first pick of the week. Um, I just think it's a big number against a team that looked good last week. I think the public might fall in love with CJ Stroud, fall in love with that Texans team that has outperformed expectations. Certainly my expectations this year, uh, probably almost everybody's expectations outside of their, uh, outside of their building. And, uh, you know, nice story, nice season, great first uh, wild card game in the playoffs. CJ Stroud, I'm sure you'll have a nice career, but this week you're going to get your ass kicked. Baltimore Ravens minus nine and a half is my first pick of the week. I like that pick. We were uh, opposite last week on that Houston uh, Cleveland game. I kind of said I liked Houston sort of on the money line, took the points, but um, yeah, I I really agree with pretty much all of your sentiment. I mean. There's a couple things that are worrisome to me um, about the Ravens and that bigger number. Uh, I think there's a you know a trend out there of Lamar Jackson as greater than a seven point favorite. He's like one in eight ATS or something. Um, you know I, I don't really like betting with trends personally, but it, it is an interesting data point that's available. Um, and they're just you know his numbers, Lamar Jackson's that is his numbers from regular season to playoff season, the drop off in some of his passing statistics is kind of like <laughs> kind of shocking to be honest. It's like so dramatic. Um, that's the only thing that worries me about that bigger number because this game did catch my eye. Definitely the Ravens lean. There's quite a bit of like sharp conversation around Ravens first half, uh, minus five, five and a half, six, depending where you shop. But um I, I just couldn't get myself to pull the trigger on the number. Um, I do think there's a lot of people in love with Houston. I'm going to stay in this game, but I'm actually going to do something I rarely do. I'm going to take the under. I'm going to take under 43 and a half. 
I just think the number is a little oddly low after what we just saw Houston's offense do. Um, I know CJ Stroud played at Ohio State. Um, I don't know his like background where he grew up or anything like that, but I don't know how much of really like true cold weather January football uh, he's really played in, you know, even if Ohio State was doing well in the college football playoff, those are always down south, out west, indoors, good weather, all that type of stuff. Um, I think it's going to be a tough environment for him on the road in Baltimore. Um, And I just think it's a defense that last week, you know, I, I was a little worried about the fact that Jim Schwartz loves to play so much zone. And that's like what, you know, CJ Stroud seems to give him a little bit more fits than anything else. He seems to be better, more efficient against man. Um, But I do think the thing about Jim Schwartz, when you go into game plan, you know what you're getting from that Cleveland Browns defense. And, you know, it seems like they put together a good game plan. They picked them apart. Um, I think Harbaugh and what they're doing out in Baltimore, you know, they're going to change it up. They're going to keep them guessing. They're going to give them a lot of different looks. Um, you know, and the other thing about the Baltimore side that worries me a little bit is, yes, they had the bye week, but they also didn't play. I don't think they played a single starter in week 17 against the Steelers. Um, so I think it's, you know, two weeks off should be fresh, maybe a little bit of rust, though. I don't know. I'm hoping it's a little kind of back and forth, knockdown, drag out early on uh, for your side of the bet, your sake. I hope they kind of, you know, handle and pull away down the stretch, whatever the case might be. But I could see it being tightly, uh, tightly contested in the sense of it's not going to be a shootout the way that some of these Houston games have been. Uh, I think it's lower scoring. That 43 and a half just seems too juicy. It seems like over such an obvious play. I'm going to take the opposite side of it. Yeah, man. I, I like where your head's at with the under. Um, you know, I'm thinking back to uh, that week 17 game you, or week 18 game, you should say. You just talked about with the Ravens <clears throat> where they set a bunch of starters. You know, that defense still went out there. That really was kind of an eye-opener for me with, like, a lot of the other defenses in the league where I, you think of the Bears, and it's like, yeah, there's such an improved defense. But once you get past, like, the, those top players, there's a drop-off. Dude, that Ravens defense, I know the Steelers aren't killers on offense, but that Ravens defense had guys flying around, and it was backups. It was crazy. Um, yeah, I mean, they won't – it's not going to matter if you don't win the Super Bowl. I sure. mean, it's that's all it comes down to it. And obviously, the Ravens have been good. Lamar Jackson has won an MVP, and they just haven't really gotten it across the line in the postseason. Um, so no one's going to care unless they do. But there's like some like nerdy advanced analytics out there. This Ravens team is like on paper like a top five team in NFL history. Yeah. So yeah, I mean <laughs> that defense is. Like you said, it's legit. Yeah, I would not be surprised to see like a you know a twenty to seventeen game. I wouldn't be surprised to see a thirty to zero game. To be honest, like right, it, like I I like the under. I I can see a world where both teams are low scoring. I could also see a world where the Ravens just handle them, handle the clock. Texans have a tough time. I could see both of those things happening. I like where your head's at with this under. And along the same lines with my next pick, I know Aaron, uh, Jordan Love is looking like the next great Green Bay quarterback, but I like the under in that game in, uh, in San Francisco. I like the under 50 and a half. Um, I think that San Fran defense um, is tough as nails. Um, I think if Matt LaFleur – thinks he's going to win that game. I think he knows he's going to have to control the clock. They're going to have to have some of those long drives where uh, it is like a 10 play drive. You know, they take a lot of time off the clock. They give their defense rest. I can see a lot of back and forth possessions between these teams that even if they're scoring points, they're taking a lot of time off the clock. 50 and a half feels like a big number. I know that the Packers are looking pretty sharp offensively. I know that the, the 49ers have some, some real serious playmakers offensively, but I think 50 and a half, I think we're going under that number. I think you got two offenses that can, can prolong drives and really uh, take the wind out of a defense, take the sails out of, out of their, uh, their momentum there. And I'm going to go under 50 and a half. That's my second pick of the week. Got nothing against that one. Uh, Nothing at all. I'm going to be on that game as well. Um, 
I similar to what you were saying about Houston and people kind of falling in love with what the Packers have been doing, and rightfully so. Um, I mean, to their credit, what they just did this past weekend. Neither of us were on um, that Dallas game. We t- we talked about it, and kind of a full disclosure, I ended up playing the Packers, um, which was worked out well. Um, but when we talked about it, we both said how we probably leaned towards the Cowboys because yeah. how good they were at Jerry World. Um, that was incredibly impressive what Green Bay did going down to a place that Dallas hadn't lost all year. And I know the score ended up being a little cozy down the stretch, but that was never a game. I mean, the Packers pulled their starters at one point and put them back into the game because it got a little hairy there. Um, but, it, it, you know, God bless them. What a win that was for them. Um, but I still I just don't think they're a great football team. They're still nine and eight on the regular season. They get in in the last week of the year, winning at home against a Bears team that, you know, has plenty of their fair share of problems. Um, And I don't know. I still, I think it's a great win. They're coming off a high. Uh, I think it's, you know, I wouldn't say there's ever really an opportunity for a lit down spot in the playoffs. Um, But I think coming off that win, I think it's going to be hard to replicate what they just did. Uh, San Francisco is certainly not going to be sleeping on them after what they just did. Uh, San Francisco and Green Bay in the recent history have had some some battles. You know, you think of when uh, San Francisco went out to Green Bay and won that game in that cold weather game when, you know, LaFleur didn't go for two and Rodgers was all pissed, blah, blah, blah. Um, you know, or excuse me, they went for the field goal instead of the touchdown. Um, and, I, you know, I, I could see it being – it's a tough game, but there's just a part of me that sees the San Francisco 49ers defense coming off the bye. They're going to be that much more healthy up front. I think they get after him. Um, I think Shanahan likes to play on the front foot. We know he has his struggles when they have to come from behind. They don't really ever do it, but I guess when you're, you know, blowing the brakes off of everybody, you don't have to. Um, <laughs> San Francisco had a lot of monster wins in the regular season. I just think they're a bully type of team that when they get a lead, uh, when they see the blood in the water, they really, uh, you know, keep going after it, keep the foot down. And I think they will this week. I'll take the 49ers minus nine and a half against the Packers. So through two games, we got uh, the favorites minus a big number and the unders. Uh, I like where our heads are at. Uh, You know, it's interesting. (laughs) Uh, We're we're hoping that these – these underdogs don't put up big numbers offensively. That's for sure. Um, as far as your pick, um, I think that's the side you got to lean. Like you said, Jordan Love, uh, he's playing incredible quarterback right now. Everybody's going to give him the credit, uh, but you just got to hope that public's kind of falling in love with them. Vegas knows what they're doing. Nine and a half's got to be the number. It's got to be the side. Uh, San Francisco. I will say, uh, I don't remember the exact games, but like the most recent three or four road games uh, that the Packers have played. They've put on pretty impressive performances, uh, especially offensively. And that's something that did catch my eye uh, when uh, talking the under. I was a little bit worry, uh, weary of that. But I think San Francisco steps up. I think uh, they handle business. I think they show why uh, the bookmakers value them as one of the best teams in football. And I think uh, I think they cover that nine and a half. Um, my third and final pick of the week uh, I'm going to go with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers plus six and a half at Detroit. Um, you've been calling Detroit a house of cards. I, I don't know if they're, if they're proving that they're not anymore. I don't know if they're proving that, you know, from their 12 win season, their, uh, their wild card game against the Rams. Granted, they were outgained. Uh, I, I think they might be proven that they are, uh, they're, they're a little bit more than a house of cards. Uh, but that being said, I think Tampa Bay is playing great ball. I think they'll be able to score on that, uh, Detroit defense. Um, I think they keep it within that six and a half number. Um, plus something I will absolutely agree with you on while I like Dan Campbell as a big picture coach and the way he handles day-to-day activities and, and, and instills a culture in that Detroit Lions locker room, I think that, uh, his in-game decision-making can be suspect at times and can end up uh, hurting his team. I'm going to lean on uh, Tampa Bay, Todd Bowles, and the fact that maybe Dan Campbell makes a mistake in his in-game coaching. I'm going to go with Tampa Bay plus six, six and a half at Detroit. 
Yeah, I absolutely love that play. Like you said, I've kind of been ripping the uh, lines a little bit here and there, especially last week. I said it was one of my favorite plays of the year. Um, I, I sent you the ticket I had on the Rams, so yep. you you knew you know how much I like that play. Um, and you know, I was you know I was right. It hit. Yeah. I was wrong in the sense that you know give the Lions credit. They they won the game. Um, you know, regardless of what you want to say about that uh, call, non-call PI on Puka down the stretch, that might have changed things a little bit. But they won the game, first playoff game we've ever seen the Lions win. Um, yep. So good for them. I mean, it is, you know, pretty wild to see it. A franchise who's had that much uh, struggles to finally get a little something positive. Um, so I think they got some mojo, and I'm probably gonna regret the opportunity to not uh, go against them again this week, but I'm actually staying away from that game. Um, I think the Bucks looked really good, <laughs> obviously against the Eagles team that, you know, they've just been floundering for weeks and they just couldn't flip the switch. Um, but I, the only thing that worries me about that game at all is the number. Um, I just think it's too big of a number. It, it's I feel like I would if it was like plus three and a half or plus four, I think I would be like all over the bucks. It'd probably be like one of my favorite plays. I just don't know why it's almost a full touchdown. It seems a little like they want bucks action. I don't know. It just seems a little fishy to me, so I'm gonna That's stay fair. away from it. Um but yeah, that Lions team though, regardless of how they finish out this year, you like you said, you gotta give them credit, twelve wins and they did get a playoff win at the very least. They got another home one this weekend. Um, they're that's a fourth place team in the division next year. They suck. Um uh, so <laughs> moving on, I'm gonna go to that Buffalo Bills, Kansas City Chiefs game. I'm gonna take the Bills. Um I've sort of I'm been riding train. them. Yeah, I've been riding them for a while. Uh, you know, I keep saying it every week about how I thought they were going to kind of make that run, which they did. Uh, <laughs> I had three, three future plays on the year. One was Josh Allen MVP. That is certainly not going to hit. One was that Bills plus 120 to win the AFC East, which I thought was dead in the water around Thanksgiving. They end up, you know, running the table down the stretch. That one does hit. Um, and I just think that the, this team has been in playoff mode for so long. They're so hungry. You know, they're going against this rival that they have not been able to get over the hump against in the playoffs. They finally have them at home. Um, you know, Mahomes is still getting it done. Kelsey looks a step slower, looks a little bit older. Rashi Rice has been nice. Pacheco's running the hell out of the football when he gets his touches. And that Kansas City defense is really stout. Um but I, you know, it's hard to say count Mahomes out ever uh, for obvious reasons. But I just think that this year in Buffalo, um, if they don't do it now, when are they ever going to do it? I think Buffalo is ready to go. This is what they've been uh, foaming at the mouth for this opportunity all year long. Here it comes right in their backyard. I think they go out and take it. Um, so I'll take Buffalo minus two and a half to uh, get it done on Sunday at home. It's ballsy to t uh, pick against Mahomes in the playoffs. It really is uh, pick against Reed. I will agree with you, though, in this modern age of football, I think you got a lean offense, and I think right now that Bills offense is a step above that Chiefs offense. Um, it's going to be a fun game to watch regardless of what happens. Uh, I like where your head's at yeah. uh, with that pick, though. Um, and you've been riding them, so keep riding that train, baby. Um, I got to. I will say, I will say, I am. Uh, there's quite a bit of worry that creeps in with the current linebacking situation in Buffalo. And I'll be the first to tell you that linebacker is like, you know, on the scale of, of what matters, it's, it's a bit extremely low. Uh, but they just, they got like all backups in that linebacker right now. So they're really going to have to get to Mahomes. Um, otherwise, you know, he, he's got a, pretty good opportunity to pick them apart over the middle with some of the routes that they are going to be doing with Kelsey anyway, even if they were fully healthy. Yeah. I think Bernard's like questionable or doubtful or something. And uh, that's a, that's yeah. a significant piece to potentially lose, but um, all right, quick recap. 
Uh, I'm on the Baltimore Ravens minus nine and a half versus the Houston Texans. Uh, the under 50 and a half in Green Bay at San Francisco and the Tampa Bay Bucks plus six and a half at Detroit. Jack is on the under 43 and a half in the Houston Texans at Baltimore Ravens. He's on the San Francisco 49ers minus nine and a half versus Green Bay. And he is on the Buffalo Bills minus two and a half at home versus Kansas City. Uh, looking forward to these games, Jack. Uh, any last words to leave our fans with other than like and subscribe if you're new here? Uh, you got anything else that you leave them with? A couple games left. Enjoy them. Yeah, exactly. Like we said uh, last time, you know, now we're only down to seven. So uh, <laughs> it's flying by way too fast, unfortunately. Um, and, you know, we've never really forced the three picks in the playoffs like this. I don't know if it's uh, maybe getting a little too aggressive, but we'll see how it plays out for us, um, you know. Best bets, typically you go for three because there's uh, plenty of options on the board to try to find those true best ones. But uh, these are really uh, really pushing our handicap skills to the limit. So we'll see how we're able to uh, close out the season with everybody. Hey, man. I hope you finish on a strong note. Let's get you up to 56%, 57%. Uh, if you're new here, like and subscribe. Uh, we'll catch you Next week with the championship games, enjoy the divisional round at home uh, or with however you're going to enjoy them. And uh, until next time, Jack, hit them with it. Mm, bears. Mm.